Drio sent me one of their air circulator fans and it blows pretty hard plus it can oscillate side to side and up and down. Now when I did my video comparing different fans last year people kept mentioning Vornado fans in the comments so I bought this one. It's about the same size as the Drio and it costs about the same amount of money and it also blows pretty hard. Let's try a bit of fan sumo competition. They can both blow at this piece of cardboard. Let's see which way it goes. Okay, so let's turn on the Vornado to maximum power. And it blows that uh, pretty good. Let's turn on the Drio. This is not at maximum power. So that's at level 5. Let's go to level 6, 7, 8. At level 8 the Drio is winning by a little bit, but let's put the Drio at level 9. And clearly it's, it's getting ahead of that. So let's move this until that's even. So I have to move this all the way over here so that they both push equally. So <laughs> clearly the Drio is winning this by quite a bit. But let's turn on turbo mode in the Drio. That's essentially level 10. So this is the highest it will go and it's once again leaning towards the Vornado. So I have to move this. <laughs> this is funny. Oh gosh. So basically, uh, the Drio at this distance is able to push this straight up against the Vornado, and the Vornado is at maximum power. And it makes it look like the, <laughs> the Vornado is not even running, but if I turn off the Drio, the Vornado is definitely on. Now that test made the difference look more dramatic than it is. So with the anemometer at about 1.5 meters in front of the Vornado, we're seeing... averaging probably about 3.3 meters per second. And the Drio, see about four and a half meters per second. Now, Vornado says the ducted fan plus the grill produces some kind of vortex action that makes a stream of air that goes straight across the whole room to mix up the entire room. Now, this one also is ducted with a grill, but this one also can swivel and go up and down because I think if you want to stir up the air in a whole room, Pointing in different directions is definitely a useful thing, especially if it's a really tall room. Once you get a temperature gradient, those lighter warm layers aren't going to mix with the lower layers unless you end up blowing up into them. And this one can do that. Let's compare airflow patterns coming out of the fans. First, the Vornado at 3 meters. And you can see the approximate width of the stream. So at 3 meters, it looks like the main stream is about this wide. And let's move this up and down. And now the drill at maximum in turbo mode. And these ends here are more calm than they were on the other one. But this is actually blowing a bit harder. So let's turn that down a bit to be comparable to the uh, Vornado. And about the same pattern but I think it is a slightly more focused stream of air. I think this vortex action of the Vornado is just a bunch of marketing mumbo jumbo because even just a uh, cheap fan like this, you can see it's actually fairly focused in the middle, about as focused as the Vornado was. Now the fan blades move faster towards the edges than in the middle, so they're gonna blow more air here than in the middle, and it also spins the air, because the fan spins, so intuitively you would think the air kinda gets flung outwards, so how does this form a stream? Well, what happens is the air in here kind of gets sucked in with the airstream here. So the air in here kind of gets depleted. So you get a slight vacuum in the middle here. And that vacuum causes the airstream to kind of curve towards it because it's being sucked in. And that essentially converges the airstream. Even though it started out divergent, it converges into one tight stream. So in terms of focused airstream, the Vornado does no better than the cheap fan, although it does blow harder. And the Drio, that is actually more focused than the other two, but not hugely so. Now, just for fun, the Vornado aimed at my plastic strips and the uh, Drio both at 2.5 meters. And mostly we get turbulence in the middle. But if you look at this for a while, towards the middle, I think these strips go more this way. And towards the edges, they come more this way. The Drio's not at full power to make it relatively even. See there on the far edge, they're mostly coming this way. And here, more this way, and in the middle, more this way. Because this is a bit more focused. But let's turn this on maximum. 
and I don't know, it doesn't look dramatically different. Mostly just turbulence. So let's try this pushing thing again with more distance. Uh, Drio here, tornado there. This is exactly halfway and I've got them pointed at this. So the uh, Drio is winning, but now I don't actually have to move quite as closer to the tornado to make it even. And the reason my first push test looked so dramatic is at a short distance, like about this far away, the airstream coming out of these fans is actually not much wider than this piece of cardboard. And so moving from, say, half a meter to a meter and a half away it didn't really decrease the force that much, which is why I had to get so much closer to the tornado to get it even. Now, no matter how focused the stream coming off the fan is, you're going to eventually mix with the surrounding air, and that'll turbulently mix, which will make for a wider airstream, but one that encompasses a lot more air, so that by the time you get from here to here, you might be moving twice as much air over a wider stream, but at half the speed, but it's twice as much air, and the further you get, the more air you mix in, and the slower you go, but what ultimately determines how much air you're going to move is how much momentum the fan actually gave that initial air, and that is essentially just thrust of the fan. So I could try to measure thrust by measuring how hard it pushes against a piece of cardboard, but that'll alter the airflow patterns, so I think it's more useful to measure how much the fan itself gets pushed back from pushing the air forward. So I made these two brackets that have points here, here, and here, and here, and these rest on these two boards here, so that they can swing very freely, and then the points down here support a plywood platform, which can now move back and forth very freely, but rather than let it move, I've got this arm here that goes onto a kitchen scale, and this arm is the same length as from the points here to the points here, so whatever force the fan pushes backwards on gets exerted onto the kitchen scale where I can measure it. And with the tornado on here, scale tear it to zero. Turn this on, it's at level four. We're seeing 163 grams, and it's drawing 53 watts. And now testing all the different levels on the drill. So in terms of thrust, level 4 on the Vornado is about level 8 on the Drio. Then level 3 on here is 5 here, and 2 is level 1, and level 1 on here is just 15 grams. The Drio doesn't actually go that low, but at its lowest level, this one still draws 25 watts. Whereas the Drio at 27 watts essentially blows as hard as the Vornado. And on the Drio, the uh, power level drops quite dramatically as we go down in thrust, uh, so at the lowest level it's drawing just 4 watts. And that's because the Vornado, just like all the cheap fans, uses an induction motor, which does very poorly when you throttle down the speed. Except the Vornado is not cheap. Whereas the Drio uses a brushless DC motor, which runs very well at low speeds and uses much less power. So at its lowest speed on the Vornado, you can kind of hear a motor hum. Whereas on the drill, even though it's blowing twice as hard at its lowest speed, we can just hear a bit of a whoosh from the blades, but nothing from the motor. And the drill actually runs off of this 24-volt uh, uh, wall AC adapter that just plugs into here. And I was wondering, would this thing actually run at 12 volts? So I put together this cable with this uh, plug that goes into a cigarette lighter socket in a car, or on this power station, and the other end plugs into here. And this guy comes right up, and I've got this set to level 9, but we're only drawing 13 watts, so that's probably more like level 5 or 6. So it doesn't blow as hard as it does off of 24 volts, but it works well enough at the 12 volts, which is very nice, and oscillating and all that works too. Now comparing noise levels, this is the Vornado at level 4, so maximum, and the Drio on turbo, also maximum. So they're about the same, but this one is blowing harder, so let's set this to level 8. So at level 8 it blows about as hard as this one, and that's the noise here. So 
So I'd say that one is a fair bit quieter. Now let's go down a level, level 3. That corresponds to level 5 on this one. Quite a bit quieter. Let's go to 2 on here. That would be level 1 on here. Basically can't hear this one over the noise of this one. And for level 1, we can still hear this one. At level 1, this one is still louder than this one, even though this one blows twice as hard. And of course, this one can't blow as low as this one does on level 1. Now, Drio also has an app which can also control the fan, like turning it on and off, or setting the power level. Now, do you really need a frickin' app to turn a fan on and off? But there's more to it. So you can set programs so that the fan runs at different speeds based on ambient temperature. And you can also configure it to run at different speeds based on time of day. And you can also configure how far it oscillates at uh, the angle, um, like this, or even uh, asymmetric oscillation. But the coolest feature to me is this feature called 3D Angle Control, where you can actually manually tell the fan which way to point. Now, offhand, I can't think of a practical use for this feature right now, but I'm looking forward to using it to annoy the wife and kids. Now, to put these fans into perspective, of all my fans, the hardest blowing one is this Drio one. It even outblows this box fan. The uh, Vornado is outblown by the box fan. Next, in terms of strength, we have another Drio. This one's got the same set of features as this one, but doesn't blow quite as hard. Then a conventional fan, then a tower fan. This is a Drio fan. It's the hardest blowing tower fan I've got. More conventional fans, and then these tower fans are the weakest. This one blows maybe 20% as hard as this one, and it costs about three times as much, but it does it in style. Although in terms of style, I think uh, these two Drio fans don't look bad either. And I have to say, sometimes I want just a barely perceptible draft, and for that, the Dyson is perfect. So in the States on Amazon, both of these go for $100, which is kind of ironic because there's so much more to this one than this one. And there's also the pedestal version, which only blows as hard as the Vornado, but it's got a nice solid base because on a lot of cheap fans, the base just sort of disintegrates. And at the same price, the Drio is a way better deal than something like the Vornado. But right now, there is a discount on it, so you can get it for less. So it really blows the competition away. Well, figuratively speaking.